Good afternoon, everyone. Good morning or good afternoon. Thank you so much for joining us today. We are excited to be here. We're excited to present to you on what it is to study in the US and what you can do to stand out on campus or off campus. Um, without further ado, let's go ahead and um, start the presentation. And um, we're gonna go with our introduction slides like our speakers. Um, a little bit about myself. Uh, my name is Ludmi Harath. Um, I'm the director for the um, international programs at the University of Houston, Victoria. Um, I've been an international student just like yourself as an F1 visa. Um, so I know a little bit, uh, or maybe a lot, um, on what it is to be an international student. Um, even though it's been quite some time, uh, but I must say, since I'm in the field, I can relate really well, and I know things have not changed as much as it was when I was an F1 student. Um, I know um, the struggles of visa to application, to funding, to scholarships, to aid, to finding a job, um, let alone standing out um, as a a new international student coming into the US campuses. Um, I'm thrilled that I continue to work with international students. I have um, over 21 years of experience working with international students and part of the 21 years um, is me being an international student. Um, that's a little bit about uh, myself. Um, you will get to know um, both the speakers and at the end of the presentation, you can ask questions and we will have enough time to help you answer questions. David? Yeah, so my name is David Ferrero. I'm uh, from Mount Roberts University. I'm the senior international admissions representative here. And I was uh, born in, in the US, raised uh, in Mexico, moved back to the US, eventually ended up moving to Tulsa, Oklahoma to attend Oral Roberts. And um, I studied international business administration, uh, international business, and finishing my master's in business administration right now in August. I started working at ORU as an enrollment counselor for uh, US citizens and um, eventually just uh, falling in love with international students and uh, really working through that process with them, getting their visa and making sure that we go through all those steps to make sure that they can get to the campus safely. Um, and so now I'm working as a senior international admissions representative for ORU with over 115 different countries. Okay, <clears throat> um, so a little bit about um, what we're here for you today. Um, I know you're um, here listening to the session and you're here in the affairs, going through every, every booth um, that we have to offer. Um, as an international student, what you need to know is your journey is very unique, quite unique to compare to your neighbor, next door student. So we want you to take this opportunity to do your own research. For example, um, I know you know or you have friends who are studying in the US and you may be looking at their Facebook or Instagram and seeing how, what an amazing time they're having at that particular university, um, which is really great. But I do want you to take a look at all the universities or the programs and do your research because your needs and wants are very unique. And um, not all the campuses fits all of the students. So uh, campuses are unique, um, you're unique. So our recommendation is that, that you take advantage of us today and all the booths that, they, that, is, that are there at the event and make sure that you visit every booth and talk to people and then ask all of your questions. You never know, you may find a university that you never thought of attending and you may end up attending in that to that particular university. Um, without further ado, we're gonna quickly go into the ORU slides um, because Mr. David um, has to depart pretty quickly because of another commitment. Um, so we're gonna allow him to talk about ORU so you can um, truly listen to um, Oral Roberts University um, from him. And then once um, that part is done, we will uh, come into um, how to stand um, how to stand out on and off campus. Um, David? Yeah, no, thank you so much. So as Lumi was saying, you know, every university is going to be different. And uh, that's why it's pretty important just to pay attention to the different universities to see what, what they offer. If they offer you major, they have things that you want. Um, and you know, I'm going to just talk a little bit about Oral Roberts University. As I mentioned, 
for a, a small university located up in Tulsa, Oklahoma. If you don't know where that is, it's uh, just north of Texas is where Oklahoma is. And then uh, the northeast side of, uh, of Oklahoma, that's where you're going to find Oral Roberts University. Um, and it's a small Christian university with 120 different countries represented, all 50 states represented. So we're ranked one of the most globally diverse universities in the state of Oklahoma. Uh, we have 4,163 um, students and 20% of those are going to be international students. Um, so we, we do have a very large uh, portion of our students that are international students. The top five countries right now are Nigeria, China, Brazil, South Korea, and India, with the top five majors being business administration, engineering, psychology, nursing, and biology. So we have a lot of different majors for a lot of different um, interests for students, and um, we'd love to um, present a little bit more about that. On our next slide, we have a little bit more about um, our business. So the College of Business had a major field tests, which all, a lot of different universities partake in, and 94% and of them um, scored over um, 100,000 other students, meaning that in the 99th percentile, there were the marketing, accounting, and, and international business majors, and, and then the 8th percentile were the finance majors, and the 97th percentile were the management majors. So just to say, um, our, you know, our, our business um, students are doing really, really well. Um, and I can attest to that being um, studying undergraduate business and now um, my graduate degree in business as well. Uh, the 99% of, of 2020 graduates reported job placement or graduate studies within six months after graduation. So if you're worried about return on investment, you know, the or use a great place to, to invest if you're looking for a Christian university that is going to get you a job, then we're definitely going to be there for you. The national average is typically 81%, so um, definitely doing a good job of that. On the next slide, we're going to have um, a little bit more about what makes ORU different. Um, so for, for ORU, um, like there's that quest difference that we like to talk about. The Quest Whole Leader Scholarship Program was established to recognize students who are on a tireless journey for wholeness. Their, their scholarship re recipients typically demonstrate a Christian worldview, a lifestyle of service, academic achievement, leadership ability, a vision to make a life-changing impact on others, and a healthy lifestyle. So there's typically more than 6,000 students that um, have already received the Quest scholarships. Any student any international student, domestic student, doesn't matter. Um, they all, they're all going to receive a Quest scholarship as long as they apply for that scholarship. So the, the amount does vary. We do select 20 different students throughout the year for a full tuition scholarship. So it's definitely uh, important to apply as soon as you can. Um, and there's more information about that online at quest.oru.edu. Um, so we'd love to, to share a bit more about that if you do have any questions. Um, like we do have academic scholarships as well, um, but uh, we look forward to, to connecting with you. If you do have any questions, we'll be in our booth as well. Um, we'd be happy to, to connect with you. Um, and if you want to connect with um, the ORU admissions office, um, sorry. Oh, I lost. Um, oops, I think I lost the slides. Can you all see the screen? Uh, yes. Okay. Um, if you want to connect with uh, the admissions office, um, the very last slide when um, I'm going to cover, we you will get to see the contact information um, for both the university. So here it is. Um, but you will get an opportunity to write these things down as we um, go into the session. So let's go into this session. Sorry that you're going through all these slides. Thank you so much, Luby. You're welcome, you David. Okay, so what we're going to cover today is a couple of things. So first, you know, we're going to go through what's important when studying in the U.S., um, and then also how to prepare to study in the U.S. I'm sure you've gone through this information many, many, many times. So we'll go through very quickly. Um, so that way, you know, maybe 
something that you haven't heard before will get covered. Um, and then we go, we will dive into how to stand out on campus, how to stand out off campus, and what are other ways that you can um, make yourself better. Um, and then, of course, you already heard about Oral Roberts University. Um, and then we will conclude the session with a, a brief a profile introduction to the University of Houston, Victoria. So with that, um, let's talk a little bit about how to do your research. Um, as many of you know, United States has over 4,500 institutions. You can pick from anything. Um, with that, I mean, it's pretty difficult to look into all 4,500. So this is why we have FAS and um, webinars um, like this, so you can get to know a um, little bit of, cam of campuses, maybe 20 campuses at a time. Um, or if you do go to a pretty larger webinar, you might get a little bit overwhelmed with 100, 200 universities. Um, so one of the things that's really good to answer is what is the right college? Um, the right college for you is what is for you. So uh, look at your program, what program it is for you, and then also look at the cost and a couple of other things that you know what is important to you. Um, and it's not about finding the best college or the best financial package, because sometimes the best financial package could also still be expensive. Um, so do your research and then look at the universities that best fits you, that meets your needs, your requirements. Um, and then you can uh, find with, with that 4,500 universities, we are pretty confident that you can find what you're looking for. So a couple of quick things for you to keep in mind. Um, remember how I said I was an F1 international student, so I was um, a little bit 17, maybe 16, 17 years old when I was doing my research, and we didn't have the features that you all have today. Um, we had a pretty big book um, at the U.S. Embassy or the Education USA Center. We went and turned um, to these pages, and pretty much for me, it was funding. Um, I had the discussion with my family to ask how much that they can spend, and based on that, I went and looked for universities that actually fit my funding. Um, lack of funding can really be a, a, a pain because you're going to be stressed on find, finding out, uh, can I pay the bills? Can I, I mean, how many hours do I need to work? So that's not what we recommend. We recommend students to look at institutions that fits your budget. So funding location, I mean, do you want to go into a big city, a smaller city? Um, I went for a smaller, medium-sized city because big cities tend to be a little bit expensive, like for housing can be expensive. If you decide to move off campus, that can be pretty expensive. So for example, apartments in pretty big cities in California, can, like a small studio, can range from $1,800 to $2,000, so pretty expensive. Um, the city like our city, Victoria, like a one bedroom apartment can range from 500 to 800 dollars so pretty affordable so um and then sometimes with smaller cities is you know you may not find um your country food or grocery shops that actually um, sells your country food um, but in big cities you may find those kind of features and then if you're looking for mosques and temples you may find those in um, in larger cities but in our small city, we pretty much have um, mosques and uh, you know uh, churches around our, our city also. <clears throat> and then, what is the cost to apply? So, for example, on average, you know, um, a student does apply to about five to six universities, and that means cost. I mean, applications fees can be ranging from all the way from free to two hundred, two hundred and fifty dollars. So, those are things that you need to um, look into, and not just application fees, but what about test fees? So for example, cost to um, uh, take care of TOEFL, SATs, GRE, GMAT. Do you have institutions that actually can waive those fees for you? So for example, um, like I said, 4,500 universities, some universities waive all of the testing. We are one of the universities that waive all the testings. Right there, you are actually saving roughly about $1,000. Um, what we all say to students is even before you apply for visa, you have to spend close to about $1,000 to $1,200. Um, that is even before you keep your foot in the door to the U.S. Embassy. Um, so look into universities that actually have testing, um, test optional. 
um, then program and majors and minors. I mean, if you're one of those students looking for very unique uh, type of a program, then you have to narrow down the universities that offers your unique program. Um, but if you're a person that actually you're looking for business or a, a good AACSB accredited business program or a computer science program, um, then I would say, you know, you do have a pretty good um, opportunities in uh, varieties of universities to look into. Uh, campus size, that was pretty important to me when I was looking for colleges. Um, I didn't want to go into a larger university that had over 40,000 students. I wanted to go for a small to a medium sized university because I'm new to the university, I'm new to the country. I want to make sure that I build connections instead of not knowing who I am talking to. Or in other words, that I have to make an appointment every time that I want to talk to somebody. Um, so small, medium-sized universities roughly means there is about 5,000 to about 10,000 students in that university. Um, at University of Houston, Victoria, we roughly have about 4,900 students. Um, what I call that size is not too big, not too little, perfect size to shine. Um, a job placement. Um, I mean, you know, you're here listening to the sessions, you're here at attending the fair, um, because you want to complete that degree, the undergrad degree or graduate degree, and get that job that you always wanted to have, get that dream job that you wanted to have. So these are things that, you know, you do need to look into, look at career services of the universities, look at internship opportunities. I mean, is internship something that this particular university uh, recommends for students or um, gives opportunities for students to complete? At our university, we pretty much allow students to do internships or for students to get into internship programs because we know employers are looking for those students that have job um, experience or internship experience under their belt by the time they graduate. Um, safety is an important um, item. I mean, I'm pretty sure your parents probably will ask, you know, how safety of that university or that city. Um, and then return on your investment. Um, for example, if you're um, taking a loan or your family is uh, taking a loan for you for four years, um, how much time is it going to be for me to pay back that loan? Or is it truly worth the amount of money that I'm spending on this particular degree? Um, so in order to find out the return on your investment, I think the best way is to know who you want to be, what kind of jobs you will plan to do, and then do a quick search to see how much salary that you can anticipate from that particular job and that particular field. Um, so that will actually, you know, um, give you a good understanding of if my family takes a loan um, of so many, so many years, how much time will I, I mean, after a job that I need to pay back to my family or the loan. So now let's talk about standing out. Um, what is standing out? So standing out means um, it's not just, you know, completing your academics here, not just getting all A's into your academics. Standing out means that you are going to do other things. So you're not just competing with domestic students in the same program. You're competing with really intelligent, amazing international students just like yourself. So how do you stand out? from all of those people. For example, um, if you're a business student and there is a business position um, opening in Houston or in Austin or Dallas, um, I bet that there are roughly about 300 students complete or applying for that one job that is posted. Um, just look at the statistics, right? I mean, if you do look at any city that you go into, that particular city might have at least two to three universities um, or a community college that all of those students graduating from those programs are going to be applying for the same jobs in that particular city. So the competition can be really fierce when you're looking at jobs. I know that that is what it is because I work with international students who are looking for jobs at this moment. So why stand out? To make sure that you have a robust resume or a profile experience in the US. Um, most of you who's coming in probably are high school students or probably graduate students in a university outside of the US that are seeking um, standing out or seeking employment or any sort of recognition in the US. And you can only do that by taking part in 
everything we have to offer to you. Um, so standing out can help you gain experience in the US, can help you network with a lot of people, um, and it can make you better yourself. It can help you um, improve your language skills. Um, like I said, you know, I was born in Sri Lanka. English is not the second, English is not the main language um, in that country. Um, and networking and talking to people made me who I am today. I'm one of those students, you know, who came to a smaller university who was the first a few students from my own country. And, and I did everything that the university um, had. Um, if there was a volunteer opportunity, I was in it. If there was an ambassador program, I took part in it. Um, so I really put myself out there to better myself. Um, and then also gain the skills. Do you know what employers in the US is looking for? Probably not, but making sure that, you know, you take part in all of these things will gain you these experience and po pocket money. I mean, money shouldn't hurt, right? I mean, when you take part in on-campus jobs or any events, um, you have the opportunity to make some of uh, money um, funding. So what can you do to stand out on campus? So a couple of things is right away when you arrive, you may not have the experience to secure on-campus job. So what that means is, you know, um, on-campus jobs are pretty competitive too. So you may, if you're not able to secure on-campus job, take part in volunteering activities and um, to do the volunteering activities. Don't think of volunteering as um, why should I do my, why should I contribute my hours, my energy when I'm not compensated? Um, please remember that nothing is given for free, yes, but at the same time, nothing is gained without effort either. So you have to contribute in order to receive all the accolades. Um, so do not, you know, accept um, to receive the benefits like, okay, I'm going to write a recommendation letter for you, but you haven't contributed much to write a recommendation letter. So by volunteering on campus, you can put those volunteering experiences on an on campus job that you're looking for. So it goes into the um, on-campus jobs. So apply for on-campus jobs. Um, apply for all available jobs. Don't be picky on the jobs. Um, I remember when I started, there wasn't much jobs an international student can apply to because of, you know, there's few categories of, you know, how you can find jobs. Um, so the jobs that was available was, you know, um, we had a job at facilities. I was, I applied for a job in campus police. I applied for jobs at, uh, at the dining center services. I wasn't picky. I completed those jobs. And those jobs actually allowed me to get to know a lot of people um, while I was working in the dining. Um, guess who comes through dining? All the students come through the dining lines. And I built so many good friends because I worked at the university dining. Um, so don't be picky when there's on-campus jobs. Take every opportunity as opportunities to gain and gain skills and to better yourself. I mean, I can guarantee you anything you do in the United States will only help you to progress through. And then also it helps you to get recommendation letters. It helps you to pretty much full your uh, profile or like make your resume into a, a full one page or maybe a full two pages because you now have a lot of things to include in your resume or your CV. And a couple of other things. Um, one of my philosophies is take part in all activities on campus. So whether it's academic, personal, and social. Um, take part in conferences, be a resident assistant, orientation counselor, student ambassador. Um, you can actually apply to be a country organizer. So for example, if, there is, um, if you're from a country and there is five students in that particular country, um, go to the student life services or student organization department and say, hey, we want to build a student organization for country X. So for example, that's what we did at my university. We got together, five of us, and then we built a group called um, Students from Sri Lanka. Um, so those are, those, are, those are things that you, know, you can build. And those are opportunities that universities do provide. Um, and then also take part in positive events. For example, if you um, don't like, you know, how certain policies and practices are, are, are working, um, make sure you do some research and then make sure that, you know, you work on changing some of those policies and practices in a positive way once you do some research. Um, take the opportunity to meet and greet people as you pass. Um, and then people always remember. Um, and I always um, like to say this to students. If you find out if you're the first student from that, 
that university from, from that country. Um, for example, um, I was the first Sri Lankan student um, to work in the international office, but we had three Sri Lankan students at that time. But um, I, I would always say, um, you know, I'm from Sri Lanka. I'm a, a freshman, first student from Sri Lanka. And if you do um, have uh, no students from your country and you're the first student from your country, make sure you promote that. I'm the first student from country X. Um, this is exciting for me to be at this university and share my culture, share, uh, showcase my culture. Um, I mean, be proud to showcase your culture because you. I can tell you, you will stand out. Um, by showcasing your culture and talking to people about your culture at, at university campuses. Which goes into the next um, um, uh, bullet point. Um, always be proud and bring something from your home country to fill a table. Um, because I can tell you, you will have ample opportunities, not just on campus, but off campus to showcase and talk to people about your culture, about your country. Um, and in a city like our city in Victoria, um, our Victorians or community members do not get um, the opportunity to learn about a different country or a different culture. And our American students may not have the opportunity to spend $1,500 or $2,000 to go to your country to see your country, to visit your country. They see and visit your country through the eyes of yours um, and to what you're sharing and what you're explaining. Um, so take this opportunity as like a win-win um, because you know, you're know you sharing your culture, your country, and then in return, you have a friend um, from the US. Um, the next one is internships. Um, I did talk about internships uh, because internships can be quite um, interesting and can gain you a lot of experience. It does spare um, credits, so you do get academic credits for your internships. Um, and this is something that I cannot stress enough. Um, because of the pandemic, we even promote virtual internships. We have a few organizations that we work with that provides virtual internships to our students. I know we are running a little bit time, but, um, but I'll be quick. Um, how can you stand out off campus? You know, you can again volunteer in food pantry, Habitat for Humanity, uh, cleaning campaigns, um, and then also take the initiatives. For example, um, if you see a elderly home, um, just get together with some of the other international students from other countries and see if you can go at tea time at the elderly home and then maybe play some games with the elders at the elderly home. Um, or volunteer um, your time at maybe a church or a temple um, and get showcase you know where you're from and then talk to uh, people to explain you know I'm an international student I attend this particular university um, so they get to know you you are building networking opportunities um, and then other things is you know uh, some cities will have um, events like 4th of July. 4th of July is the Independence Day at, in the U.S. Um, those kind of events, Christmas holiday parade, uh, parades, or those things where you can actually take part in or volunteer. Some cities will have um, marathons where they will call out the volunteers to volunteer. You can sign up and take part. Um, to be a volunteer, nothing is costly for you. You all, it's just time. Time, just five hours of your day that you can volunteer. <clears throat> Um, we did talk a little bit about on-campus employment. Um, as a F1 student, you can work 20 hours on campus when school is in session. So usually school sessions means fall semester, spring semester. If you're on a quarter system, that could be a little bit different. Um, 40 hours when campus is not in session. So typically summer months, um, we call it the vacation months and then holiday weeks such as Thanksgiving, Christmas, those, those weeks you can work 40 hours. Um, you can work as many jobs on campus. I remember there was a time that I worked at, I think at least about four jobs to make the 20 hours, but you're responsible to make sure that you know your hours are intact. So if you're doing four jobs on campus, you just have to make sure that all the hours that you're working is 40 hours, uh, sorry, 20 hours when school is um, in session and 40 hours when school is not in session. And what are the types of jobs? You can apply for any on-campus job, whether it's a RA or dining or facilities, um, any job that is, um, that is there. Off-campus employment can be um, a bit tricky. It can be in few different options. Internships, of course, we covered. Um, optional practical training is uh, something that all international students receive. And that is an authorization that you can apply for after graduation. You apply for before graduation the last semester, but you can only work after, after you complete the program. 
Um, there are some institutions that will have co-op programs. What that means is mainly these co-op programs can be junior, senior, graduate programs. Um, that is, uh, universities will have partnerships with certain companies or organizations that you working in these companies and organization from the very beginning is part of the academic curriculum. Um, and then the last one you can work off campus is economic hardship. Um, I mean, we, we do understand that the sponsor can pass away. A lot of, um, you know, life can happen with uh, uh, sad stories. Um, each university's um, economic hardship process can be very different, but you do have that um, option as well. And a couple of other events, um, academic conferences, uh, locally, nationally, or internationally. Um, those are things that I strongly recommend that you work with your academic advisor or your department or your international advisor, how you can um, get into these conferences. Um, the last one is when you do head back home, um, for vacation, um, we strongly recommend that, you know, you be an ambassador for the university that you're in. Um, talk to people, talk to neighbors, talk to your high school um, counselors, do a session in your high school. So you can talk about the university. Um, if you do like the university that you're attending, I mean, you have to like the university you're attending, otherwise you wouldn't be there um, because what we say is uh, sharing is care I mean you, you, sharing is caring so if you like something about your university and you do want to share your experience share about your university so other students like yourself can use you as a resource and then um, come to that university and expand um, the group from your country um, COVID-19 is quite important. Um, every university adapted to COVID-19. Um, we have uh, many things virtually. Um, all of these services that you see in this slide, um, you will get the opportunity to um, use them. Um, we are a student-centered university. We have a um, plethora of services that we offer for all students, not just international students. Um, again, a couple of um, things that we have for COVID. We do have 24-7 cell phone that students can call during after office hours, virtual programming, virtual sessions. I mean, virtual sessions like we're doing right now. Um, many, many, many services. So a couple of things to look at preparing to study in the US. Um, application process, we talked about these things down payments, deposits, wait listing. Um, if you're looking for a university that the acceptance rate is 10% of students, um, don't waste time waiting to hear back from them. Maybe complete another application to a different university. So always have a backup plan. And then it's always best that you apply at least for five, five universities. So now we're going into the university profile. So with that, I thought, you know what, let's go into a call. So I'm going to send out a question. Where is UHV located? Okay, 20 seconds is up. So most of you said in Houston, but we are located in Victoria, Texas. So um, even though our university name says University of Houston, um, but you can see it's Victoria, we are actually the Victoria branch and we are our own university. So yes, we are located in Victoria. Let's go to another poll. Okay. Which state is UHV at? We'll give 20 seconds to answer. And then, well, there you go. Texas, Woo we are in Texas. Okay, I'm gonna end the poll. Um, so let me actually talk a little bit about our university. Um, I don't know if you can see, there's a little map of the United States. We are right in the bottom of Texas. Um, we're a few hours away from the Mexican border and about 20 minutes away from the pretty ocean, 20 to 40 minutes away from the pretty ocean. Um, so yes, we can be super hot, but you will see that we have unpredictable seasons. So right now, um, yesterday it was 90 degrees. Today is pouring. Um, so the weather can be pretty interesting, um, but um, 
pretty hot. Uh, there's only two seasons, I would say, for Texas, rainy season and hot season. Um, one of the unique things about our university is we are roughly two hours away from all the metropolitan cities. So Houston is two hours, Austin is two hours, Dallas is five hours, um, but um, San Antonio is two hours. Um, you can actually get a flight from Victoria straight to Dallas, um, pretty, pretty affordable. Um, so instead of driving the five hours, you can actually, if you have family in Dallas, you can get a flight. Um, we are marked as the fifth most affordable university in Texas. Texas is the third largest state with the number of international students. So in Texas alone, we have roughly about 82,000 international students. That's the third largest state in the US. So which means people love to come to Texas. Um, our funding, um, it won't break your bank. What, what it means is we are already affordable, but on top of it, we do give scholarships for international students. Um, one of the unique things, aspects of our university is because we are a small university, we absolutely know all of our students. So roughly we have about 160 international students on campus from 48 countries. I can tell you we know every one of them and not just um, know the students, we get together with the students. I mean, when you become a prospective student to the university, you will see the amount of communications that comes from our office. Um, we are much dedicated and we have hands-on um, process with our international students. So um, right now, this says 4,500, but we are at 4,900 um, students. Um, and then our scholarships ranges from 3,000 to 10,000. Actually, if you're a graduate student, you can get scholarship stipends and waivers to about $12,000. Um, on top of this, um, if you live on campus, we actually give additional funding for you to live on campus. Um, so the undergraduate programs that you see here are the programs that we have. But what we are most popular for computer science, biomedical, biology, computer information systems, um, data science and uh, simulation, and uh, psychology, mathematics, um, and all the business programs. Um, our business programs are AACSB accredited, so which means um, you have the international global recognition. So when you do graduate from one of our school of business programs, your degree is valid anywhere in the world because it's a globally recognized degree. Um, we have marketing, management, finance, accounting, you name it, we have the business programs. Um, and then from education side, we have health studies and kinesiology. So with that end, not forgetting, we have the best soccer program for women and men. Um, we have uh, baseball, um, softball, golf for students. So if you're one of those students interested, we are the campus. Um, then one of the best features of our university is we do not require any testing. So which means we don't ask for SATs, we don't ask for GRE, GMAT, we don't ask for recommendation letters. Um, all we need is we need how you perform in your back home um, examinations or your universities or schools. Our scholarships are based on three requirements. High school, college transcript from your back home gets 30%. Personal statement gets 40%. Resume gets 30%. So you can see if you're somebody with a little bit bad grades, maybe 2.0 GPA, 2.5 GPA, um, you still can get a pretty good scholarship because you can see personal statement and resume from 70% of the rubric of the scholarship. If you're a graduate student, you can uh, secure grad assistantships, um, teaching assistantships, and our deadlines are listed here. If you're looking for fall 2021, we are still accepting applications. Um, so you can check us out. Our application deadline for actually fall 2021 is August 1. So let's go into a, another question. Um, and our application fee is $25. Um, let's go into this question. So what tests are required to get admitted at UHV? Okay, 20 seconds is up, um, none. 
So you are 19 of the students got it right. None. We require none. Okay. Um, how big are class sizes at UHV? Twenty seconds is up. I'm going to end the poll. Eighteen students is one of our largest classes, but if you go into more senior classes or graduate classes, we're looking at ten. But the answer for this one is eighteen students. Okay. Next question: What is the average pay for working on campus at UHV? Okay, I'm going to end the poll. I can see there's some little bit of confusion. Um, actually, the answer for that is um, the, the minimum wage that we have for UHV is roughly about $7.50 an hour. But the answer for this one is it depends according to undergrad and graduate, because if you're a graduate student, you can actually get a little bit more pay per hour. Okay, next question. How many hours can you work? Okay, I'm gonna end the poll. 19 of you got it right, 20 or 40 hours. Because remember, when school is in session, you can work 20 hours. When school is not in session, you can work 40 hours. Okay, let's go to the final one. Uh, let me see. Okay, here you go. How much maximum scholarships can you earn at UHV? I'm gonna end the poll. 18 of you got it right, 12,000. Um, our scholarships ranges from 3,000 to 10,000, but if you're a graduate student, what did I say? It can go up to 12,000. So maximum is 12,000 if you're a graduate student, but if you're an undergrad um, with living on campus, tuition, the scholarships, it can come to a pretty good 10 to 12,000. Okay, so I think we have answered some of the questions. So with that, I'm gonna conclude the presentation, but I see we have questions. Um, the first question is, is agriculture available? Unfortunately, not at UHV, um, but I'm not sure if ORU has it, but um, I, I can't speak for ORU. Is fall 2021 August one deadline for grad studies as well? Absolutely. Um, but I, I need to be very clear, um, if you are a graduate student, uh, we can review your application, but keep in mind, you know, you do need to come to campus by August 19. So I'm not sure how well you can secure the visa and things like that. But if you're from a country where visas are happening pretty quickly, uh, by any means, yes, go ahead. Um, you can apply. And if you're not able to make it, we can defer your enrollment for spring. Next question, uh, what are the requirements to become a teaching assistant? I'm currently enrolled in uh, home country as uh, a master's degree in US Canada, okay. Um, it all depends on what program you're looking for. So I can speak behalf of um, the computer science uh, MBA programs um, for as a teaching assistant or a graduate or a research assistant, what we need is we first need you to be admitted to the program and then we need a robust resume 
um, from you and a personal statement indicating um, your interest in a TA or an RA position. Now, if you're a computer science student looking for TA, RA, um, computer science, information technology, um, those kind of things, we do require uh, some knowledge in some programming like C++ programming, um, and then really to come for you to come from our IT computer science programming background. Um, so those are a couple of requirements, but um, when you do apply for the program, I personally look at your application, look at your resume, and then if you, if I believe that you're somebody who fits the profile, I will email you and say, hey, you're a good candidate for a GATA position. Please connect with the faculty member, and then I give you the information of the faculty member. Um, what artistic careers do you offer? Um, we do have arts and sciences, so we do have arts uh, programs. We have um, quite a few programs, but not all programs are F1 eligible. So what I would recommend is for you to go to our website and see the arts programs, if, these, if, if those are programs that you're looking for. Um, the next one is, what is what's the tuition fee for an international student master's in business? It all depends. We are roughly looking, uh, depending on what scholarships you're looking at. If you do get just the cultural scholarship, you're looking at roughly about $14,000 for the MBA program for two for one year, so which means two semesters. But if you do secure the uh, merit scholarship, which is the highest scholarship, you're looking at roughly about uh, $7,800 for one year. Um, and again, um, if you do secure a teaching assistantship or a, a research assistantship position, that cost can also uh, decline, um, go uh, a little bit down not decline, go uh, a little bit down. Uh, can the university help with the visa for the students? We cannot help with the visa because visa is done through the US consulate office, but we do have sessions like uh, visa preparation sessions, like mock interviews that we assist students to get rid of their jitters, um, like nervousness. Um, but again, we cannot guarantee that you're going through our visa mock interview that you're going to get the visa uh, for surely. Uh, but we can definitely tell you, well, you know, um, you need to look into this area or, you know, you need to not be uh, nervous um, when you're answering questions. But we do have those services for students. Um, I think I answered, okay, we have a couple more. If my school calendar ends in December, can I enroll spring 2022? Absolutely. We do admit you with pending grades. So our deadline for spring 2022 is November 15th. So if you, I mean, you can start applying even as early as September, um, but um, yes, absolutely. But you just need to make sure that you're gonna be in a rush because um, we will admit you and then the visas, the holidays are there. So the visa offices are gonna be closed for a significant portion of time, uh, but we can make it happen. Do you offer cheer scholarships? Unfortunately, um, not that I know of, um, but if you do uh, tag another scholarship, maybe um, athletic scholarship, um, you may be able to, but this is not something that UHV um, offers at the moment. Um, so we actually answered all the questions, but I do see we have chat questions. Um, one of it is, can you major in business and minor in psychology? Absolutely. You can major in business and minor in computer science if you want. Um, or you can minor in five other areas. You can also double major. Options are endless in the U.S. Um, what were the minimum SAT and TOEFL scores to apply? Like I said, we do not require any testing. So SATs you can scratch off. But for TOEFL, um, we do require TOEFL. If you do want to do TOEFL, because sometimes um, students are afraid that you will not get the visa um, if you don't have the testing. Um, but our TOEFL requirement is 61. We are actually going away from TOEFL because TOEFL is super expensive for students. We learned that TOEFL roughly is about $450 for students to take. So you can do Duolingo and we do accept Duolingo, which roughly the test is $48. Um, so the Duolingo score, we ask 85. Um, the next one is, uh, do you have intramural sports? We absolutely do have intramural sports. Um, it is necessary to have level of English. Um, you do need to actually convince the university that your English comprehension is pretty equipped for you to undertake a four-year or a two-year graduate program. So how we do that is we look at your transcripts and we look at your background. Um, and if you really want to know that your proficiency is up to level, I would strongly recommend you to pay the $48 and do the Duolingo test. 
Um, because if you do not take the Duolingo test, um, then we do have a mandatory test. All students have to take that mandatory test. Um, that is to test your math and English. So it's best that you actually do a Duolingo test, or if you think you are pretty confident with your English, request an English interview. And we have um, staff that is ready to interview you, and the interview will be one and a half hours. And it's free. If I'm graduating in 2022, when do you recommend starting the application process? How can I apply for scholarships? So if you're graduating in 2022 and you um, are graduating sometime in the spring semester, which is January to June, I strongly recommend you to apply uh, to the fall semester, which is fall 2022. The deadline is June 15th, so apply sometime in March with your pending grades. And you can also be admitted with your pending grades and you can also receive scholarships with your pending grade. Just remember the deadlines, June 15th for August semester, November 15th for January semester. Um, are there any programs? Uh, that question is not completed. Um, are there any Belize? No, we do not have uh, students from Belize. You could be the first one. Are there programs offered in education areas? Um, we do um, not have much education programs. We do have graduate programs, but not bachelor's level programs that is eligible for F1. Um, we can um, work with you on teaching programs in maybe mathematics um, and biology, um, but our health uh, studies side um, or health aspect, we have health studies and kinesiology that where you can actually go, go enroll into the programs. Are there scholarships to study medicine with um, specialty in surgery? Um, medicine uh, in the United States could be quite tricky. Um, so first you have to do a undergraduate degree, which is four years. And you, so you can apply for those scholarships for the undergraduate level. But if you're asking for scholarships in med school, that is something that you need to work with a med school and UHV does not have a med school. What is the minimum grade to receive a scholarship? 2.0 of C, C range, American C grade. Does UHV enroll students from a community college? Absolutely. Um, if I'm a graduate December 2021, when can I apply? You can either apply for spring 2022 or you can apply, the best is to apply for fall 2022. What's, uh, what are some questions you think um, as the language test? Uh, that is very specific. Um, there can be many questions that you know we're gonna ask in the language test. So I would say, don't worry about what questions they're gonna be. Just make sure that your skill is pretty good in speaking, writing and reading and understanding. I think I covered all the questions. Uh, I went to all the eight questions um, and I see there is another question. Do we have to pay to get a scholarship? Absolutely not. You just need to be admitted uh, to the university. Uh, I believe I answered, okay, I see there's two more chat. Um, are credits from a current programs transferable? Absolutely. Can person apply for UHV without attending 12 and 13? Um, yes, but maybe you wanna clarify what you mean. I mean, we do need for you to have a high school diploma. If you mean that you are a young student who completed high school graduation without going to the 12th and 13th, you can. Um, we have been admitting 14, 15, 16 year olds who happen to have completed their high school without going through the 12th and 13th grade. Um, but if you're a graduate student, we do need a bachelor's degree. But if you're an undergraduate student, we, we do need high school completion. How do you cater to more mature students? Um, we do have, as an international student, the average age of an international student roughly is about 20 years from 20 years to about 32 um, because um, of uh, the gap years that international students are taking. And in some cases, students actually uh, wait to gather some funds before coming here. Um, so our programming our, and our events caters to all students. So um, there is no differentiation between an undergrad and graduate. You can actually make the most out of it regardless of how old you are. Uh, let me see. 
uh, what should we do to get the scholarship uh, be admitted to the university and then we will follow through with the process um, and then you apply uh, to a scholarship portal differently uh, with your transcripts resume and your personal statement do they accept um, intermediate level of english uh, depends on which intermediate um, we do accept varieties of listing of uh, English tests, so you can visit our website um, and then look at those levels. We do accept most of all the Cambridge and Oxford English um, testing um, of intermediate B1, B2 levels, so there's many, many, many um, levels. Um, but if $48 is not much for you, I would say sit for the Duolingo test. Are credit hours from another country transferable? Absolutely, as long as you go through an evaluation process, because we need to match how the Belize um, courses are mapped to the US standards. So yes. Does UHV accept students who does an international? Absolutely, and keep in mind, if you're from an IB program, you can receive undergraduate credit for depending on how, uh, what your IB scores are. If I graduate in December 2022, when do I have to send the application? Ooh, that's a long time. Um, if you finish in December 2022, I would say you apply for fall 2023. What would be the best major and minor to become an OBGYN? Good question. I would say biology. Um, biology is a program that we have, and then you can minor in anything. Um, keep in mind, you know, being a doctor is not just in the industry of medicine. Um, you can actually minor in health studies. Health studies talks about a comprehensively how a hospital works, how health studies works. So if you are going to be an OBGYN, you know, you need to know how hospitals work, right? I mean, you need to know how community centers with medical work. So um, I would strongly recommend that if you are going into OBGYN, do biology, maybe minor in chemistry, maybe minor in health studies, maybe minor in kinesiology, you know, or physical therapy. Um, so you can minor in anything, or you can minor in computer science, because Everything is computer science these days, right? I mean, if you do a software, it's computers. If you, you know, work on a, a digital program that is uh, showing you uh, the parts of the body, that's computers. So you can minor in anything that you think is going to be beneficial for your uh, future uh, careers. Uh, let me see. I missed two questions. Do you have any aviation? We do not have aviation. Uh, what would be the best to major minor become a neuropsychologist? Um, I think neuropsychologist is a graduate level program. So if you're going into neuropsychology, I would strongly recommend for start with a bachelor's degree in psychology and then more, be more specific when you're going into graduate program. And as a minor, you can do biology or you can double major in biology and psychology. Um, can we apply to study at university next year? Absolutely. Since Belize's official language is English, um, is Duolingo spell test required? If your official language is English, we do not require any English testing. I'm not sure if we have time. Marco, do we have time or are we on time? We're on time. We just have a couple minutes. Uh, maybe if you wanna give a little bit of a final note for students. Um, I have two questions. Does international baccalaureate students have benefits? Um, yes, they do have benefits. Uh, the benefits are that you can actually receive undergraduate course credit depending on what your um, IB grades are. Do you all have any other questions? I think um, slowly I'm seeing uh, the participants in this chat is also going down. We were at 75. We're at 56 now, so maybe it is time for all of you to head home, probably. <laughs> um, but I'm, I'm here if you have any final um, minute uh, questions. And um, I'm going to actually show you the screen so you actually have um, access to our information. One more question. Okay. Um, are there universities that give you scholarships for medicine with a specialty in surgery? I honestly cannot answer that question um, because medicine in the United States is pretty intense and pretty long. So um, first you have to study a four year degree, then um, you have to do MCATs, then apply for med school. Sometimes from the very first shot, you may not get accepted to med school, which means you have, may have to do a master's program. And then when you go to med school, that's where your question lies. So 
um, that needs some research, or I would say, I think you cannot convince a med school to give you a scholarship without them knowing what your grade and profile is. Um, can I still apply now, although I will graduate next year in August? Um, no, if you're graduating next year, August, you should wait until you're done with your program. Okay, and we just have a minute left. Do you want to maybe uh, have a little thought, a lot, final thought for students? And then sure. We'll... So thank you all so much for uh, coming in today. I know you all had pretty amazing um, questions. I think this is the most interactive session I've had, um, you know, for this week. Um, my name is Ludmi Harat. You can always find me. You can Google me. I'm, I mean, uncommon name and you can directly connect with me or our email is pretty easy international at uhv.edu um, think about it you know your university should be so unique for you for your needs just don't go copy other people uh, because that's what you see that they're doing um, worldwide is doing a fabulous job with getting universities together so pay an, uh, keep an eye on their website to see what other fairs are coming up and then make sure that you're going to each and every school booth to talk to people. So with that, thank you all so much for coming. Um, somebody asked for my email and I am typing my email in the chat box. Um, so we're gonna get disconnected like now. <laughs> Quickly type in uh, this email address and you can connect with me um, directly. Thank, thank you, you so much for coming. Yes, thank you so much, Lukmi. That was so great. And thank you to everyone who came out to watch. Um, this was such a great presentation. And uh, check out Ludmi and David in their booths. We have another hour and a bit left. So definitely, like Ludmi said, uh, check out all the booths as well. Bye now. <laughs>